Yuffest Music Lesson. Happy Friday. Today is another installment of your first music lesson, starring my favorite instrument, the bass guitar. I've been playing the bass guitar for almost 20 years, and professionally for over 10 years. I love the simple versatility of this beautiful instrument. It's an instrument that's easy to learn, but difficult to master. Just like guitar, we can play basses either an electric or an acoustic instrument. Today, we're going to be learning about the acoustic bass. It's a beautiful instrument that I bought for about $500 a few years back that has served me extremely well. This bass is acoustic electric, which means it can be plugged in and played as an electric instrument or just played acoustically. As you can see, this is what's called hardware. On the outside, it controls the tone and the volume. And there's also a tuner on this bass. What happens is you plug it in to an amplifier and it usually comes with a nine volt battery that you'll have to change periodically. The bass is built very similarly to the guitar and many of the parts have similar names. So you've got your headstock up here. These are your tuning pegs which control the pitch of each string. So if I play a string and turn the tuning peg, it changes the pitch. We go all the way down to the bridge and which has a saddle. So you're gonna, when you put new strings on, you'll wrap them up from the little hole all the way up to the top. This is a sound hole. This is the difference from an acoustic to an electric bass. Electric basses don't have a sound hole. Acoustic basses do. This allows sound to resonate and escape and gives it a little bit more volume. It makes it a little bit louder than an, an electric bass is when it's not plugged in. Down here, I already mentioned the input jack and the battery case, I don't know, battery place to put the battery, whatever. Um, and then here, this is a cutaway bass guitar. So similar to the guitar that I showed you in a previous lesson, it gives you room to hit those higher notes on the neck. So we'll tune the bass similar to the first four strings that we tune a guitar. So we have an E string, an A string, a D, and a G. We can say every apple does good, or every ape draws gardens. I don't know, whatever sentence you want to use, whatever mnemonic device will help you remember the names of the strings. So let's tune. Now this bass has a tuner, which you can use to tune the strings, um, but I think the battery's dead and I don't wanna go grab one. So we're gonna go back to our favorite tuning app, Guitar Tuna. I swear by this app. The bass option has a four and a five string. And if we count the strings on this one, we have one, two, three, four. So we're going to use the four string bass standard tuning, if you will. And that's the EADG that I already mentioned. So we'll start with the E string. That one's pretty close, just a little bit sharp. Sharp means it's too far to the right on the app, so you want it to make a little sound when it's tuned right. Like that. Let's check the A. Close enough. How about D? Good. And G. There we go, we're all tuned. As you can see here, starting from the headstock, we are again divided by these little metal pieces called frets. And so your first fret is up here and you wanna play in the middle of the fret. Otherwise, it's not gonna sound very good. It's gonna sound like it's bordering between two notes. The tone's not quite as good. You wanna go in the middle of the fret. So from the headstock towards the bridge, we're gonna count up. We're gonna go one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, two, three. Twenty-three frets on this bass. I did not know that. I learned something new today. One thing I would like to point out is that there are many different ways to play the bass guitar. You can use a guitar pick, which I don't have, but sometimes when I don't have one, I actually do have one. It's right behind me, but I'm just not gonna grab it. You can make the shape 
of a guitar pick and sort of pretend you're playing one or you can actually use a guitar pick to play the bass. When you're playing the bass, typically I would use thicker picks, 0.75 millimeters or thicker usually is what I would go with. But I'm just not a fan of thin picks anyway. Um, the most common style of playing the bass guitar is the two finger style. Now, typically electric basses have a pickup that you can rest your thumb and practice your two finger style. If you don't have that, like on this acoustic bass, I can, you can anchor your thumb up top. Okay, you can't really see that. So you've got to get really comfortable playing the bass with your two fingers. It's a very common style. It's the easiest way to play, in my opinion. I try not to be too much of an elitist with the bass guitar. I know we all have different skill levels and different strengths and different interests. But I would highly recommend learning how to play this way. You can also rest your, finger, your thumb on the neck. You can do it that way, no problem. One other way we can play is called slap and pop. It's a little bit more of an advanced technique. The bass guitar is considered part of the rhythm section, so it can be used as a percussive instrument. You know, the drums and the bass are considered the rhythm section of any rock band or, or musical group. Um, so you can use it as a percussive thing. This, the slap, thumb slap, is very much, very much using the bass as a percussive instrument, um, which is great for certain styles like funk. Last thing I want to do today is learn a little bit of a song. I'm gonna play this, you tell me if you recognize it. So what's happening here? Okay, you, didn't, you weren't able to see my fingers there. Let me try this again, let me adjust this camera here. So, we're gonna go. The hardest part of this is gonna be not only using your fingers, but actually sinking your left hand, your fretboard hand, and your right hand, your strumming hand. So rhythmically, we want to go. And that's the hardest part. So what you want to do to practice that you want to practice working the fingers, alternating your pointer finger and your middle finger, your first and your second finger, uh, as quickly as you can takes practice, takes time. Um, you can pause the video here and practice that as long as you want until you're comfortable um, and you wanna move forward to the next step. The next step is combining the changes of the frets with the rhythm that you play. So when you're learning a new song, it's really important to practice it slowly and work your speed up progressively, slowly. So if you start at a much slower speed, the distance between the notes is bigger, right? And so you can, typically I use a metronome for something like this. I don't know what this tempo of the song is, but maybe 70, 80 BPM beats per minute and uh, start slow, just work on keeping a consistent tempo with the metronome. That's one important reason to use it. Another reason is to play a song slowly and gradually build your way up. Once you're comfortable at 70, work your way up to 75 and then 80 and then 85 BPM. And in no time at all, well, you know, not literally, but metaphorically speaking, in no time, in a very small amount of time, um, you'll have the song down at song speed, at the speed of the song. So um, here's how we play this part. I'll give you the notes at the bottom here. And we're going to go. And so those four quick notes right there, I didn't leave any space there um, so that you can, you can visualize that they're very quick. There's no, they're one after the other. Um, so that's it. All right, folks, that's it for our lesson today. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great week. I'll see you soon.